Yellowstone supervolcano, large uplift and deformation has been spotted in the northern part of the caldera by USGS geologists. In the video before this one, we took a few of the uh, information from the GPS stations and I gave you and I will give you a link again to the geodesy GPS stations. It's basically all the GPS stations worldwide, but we saw some around the caldera, also around Hebgen Lake, also around the north, and we saw that basically uh, that area is moving every which way. There are areas that are going southeast, there are others that are going northwest, others that are uh, subsiding, others that are inflating, and uh, the whole thing is heaving, it's moving. This shows here, this graph shows that came out in uh, April 2019, the magma plume underneath Ridgecrest and also the arm going towards, one arm going towards the west coast, the other going towards Yellowstone. Basically, they have the same magma body, the same corridor of a magma. And this, of course, shows deformation, as you can see, the profile of it and the coloring of it showing. Now, this is by Sebastian Ketley of Express UK showing volcano scientists keeping the watchful eye on the uh, supervolcano, which has the largest magma chamber and reservoir in the world, as far as they know up to now. Uh, we don't know what they'll find in the future. This is a supervolcano that also emits 45 kilotons of carbon dioxide every single day. 45 kilotons of carbon dioxide. This was one of the reasons that the geologists thought that they should look to see what else is underneath the magma chamber, and they did find a reservoir. And all this is enough to fill the Grand Canyon with lava 11 times over. So they're keeping a watchful eye on it because of the fact that uh, they have seen uh, suspicions, activity around uh, the area and ground deformation. And how do they do it? Now we know that Yellowstone is believed to have had three super eruptions over the last two million years. 2.1 million years ago, 3.1 uh, million, 3.1.3 million, and 640,000 years ago. This is what shaped the current landscape of Yellowstone. And Yellowstone today remains active, but there is no imminent threat of another super eruption in the foreseeable future. And yet, despite this, scientists, of course, are scanning supervolcano for ground deformation because it could be a sign of intense magma movement deep beneath the surface. Now, we know we have a magma plume under there. This is uh, the heat under there is what is bringing up the hot water from the geysers, the fissures, the mud pots, and uh, also... Uh, very hot areas. One of them lately, the new one has been found. They have found charcoal trees. The part of the trees that was on lying on the ground has turned to charcoal, where the upper side uh, that was open to the air was basically normal. And you can understand that the area there was almost boiling. The ground was almost boiling. That's how hot it was. So, geologists are keeping track of ground deformations at Yellowstone with the aid of GPS stations and satellite-based technology known as INSAR. The INSAR, or Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, is a technique using radar images of the Earth's surface collected by orbital satellites. And this is one of the, uh, the next images coming up we'll show you. Now, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, the INSAR is an effective measuring tool because radar waves, and here's what they come up with, radar waves beam down through most weather conditions, a big advantage during, for example, a volcanic crisis where they can't see through volcanic ash. Now, the first of these satellites is e 
RS-1. It was launched into space by the European Space Agency in 1991. This so-called synthetic aperture radar, SAR, SAR for short, SAR satellite, was, uh, had the goal of uh, taking radar scans of the entire planet. And in just two years into its mission, the satellite already proved its usefulness during major earthquakes in California. Dr. Dan Zurisen, who is a USGS geologist, explained why it's beneficial to have this technology. And he did this in the Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles. He said a remarkable demonstration of INSAR's capability came in 1993, when several French scientists produced an interferogram from ERS-1 images showing in glorious detail the pattern of surface disruption caused by the 1991 magnitude 7.1 Landers California earthquake. And it goes on to explain, in the decades prior, geologists had measured fault scarps, geodesists had surveyed nearby benchmarks, and modelers had calculated how the Earth might move during a major earthquake. For the first time ever, all uh, could marvel at this picture of what actually happened. It was a snapshot taken from space by a satellite designed to do something else. And according to Dr. Durizin, technology like INSAR can spot minuscule differences in ground deformation with milliliter scale precision. That's like split hair scale precision. And this can help geologists map out changes in the landscape without having to trick across mountains and handheld instruments. And he said, today scientists are using INSAR, the magic deformation camera, to study deformation at Yellowstone and elsewhere around the globe. And using this technique, it's been possible to get an overall picture of Yellowstone deformation, revealing some interesting patterns of ground motion. The good understanding of Yellowstone's ground deformation could potentially give USGS clues and forewarnings about future volcanic and tectonic events, of course. And on average, the Yellowstone volcano goes up and down by three to five inches every year. Geologists first began to actively monitor ground movement there in the 1970s. USGS noted a period of rapid rise and fall in ground levels between 2004 and 2010, but none of the events suggested an eruption was coming. The agency said Yellowstone clearly can move up and down regularly without erupting. Now, will ground uplift at Yellowstone precede another major eruption? Well, according to USGS, each of the three major blasts at Yellowstone were preceded by slow uplift of the ground over a broad area. The uplift was caused by a magma chamber developing within the Earth's crust deep below the surface. USGS said, as the North American tectonic plate moves to the southwest, lesser evolved magma within the Yellowstone hotspot rises, interacts with, and stalls within the dense crust. The stalled magma interacts with surrounding rock, cools, and evolves into rhyolite. All the while, the hotspot continues to feed magma from deep within the earth. And of course, at one point, when the crust can't hold in that magma, that's when the eruption takes place. I'll leave links below for you for this. Here is... Uh, it's like a contour map. So any yellow ring, for example, is going to represent areas that moved up a similar amount towards the satellite during that time period. Same goes for this yellow ring or this pink ring. And when the rings are really close together, that means that there's a lot of movement in that particular area. So here, in this 1996 to 2003, there was about 12 centimeters of uplift over that time period, something like this amount, over, you know, a a very large area, about five miles across. So that's a lot of volume increase. And it, and it dies off when you get to this area out here, sort of in the middle of the caldera. 
So this is another way, instead of just looking at that spot and that spot and that spot with GPS, you might sort of get a feel what's happening, but you look at a map like this and you really get an understanding of sort of on a map view what's happening and where is the ground deforming and where is it moving up. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.